From high atop the Sycamore Room at the Norman P. Murray Community Center in beautiful Mission Viejo, home of the California Promise, it's Breakfast with Gary and Kelly, featuring guest musical artist Paul Brown. Bloody Mary table right there. That's the Bloody Mary table. Welcome to uh, Breakfast with Gary and Kelly, everybody. Thanks for being here. I would be the Gary part. She would be the Kelly part, obviously. Listen, if you're uh, tuning in... Uh, if th this is being videotaped, so if you're uh, tuning in on uh, Mission Viejo Channel 30 to watch a city council meeting, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I think this will probably put you to sleep, too. So no, we got, no, it won't but either. But if you're listening at home, because we are still broadcasting on the radio. That's exactly right. We That's exactly in right. We are Mission Viejo, California at the Norman P. Murray Center, at the beautiful Sycamore Room, where we are broadcasting our radio show on Exactly. Television. And, and, and Kelly is healing before our very eyes. So we got that going on. She's up on her real shoes. Very nice. I wanted to look at your camera. <laughs> we have a live studio audience here, it. and uh, we have a special guest. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we Would do. Would you like to do the honors? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we have really, really been fortunate with this series to have some great, great people. And this guy is, is man, I just, I can't believe it. I know. He is, yeah. uh, he has generated through a variety of ways, 50 or more mm -hmm. tunes that have been number one on the charts. He has got two Grammys of his own. And he is a he is a great talent. We're thrilled to have him. Please welcome Paul Brown. Paul. Yeah. He's given up watching the U.S. Open to be here too. I mean, that's an impressive. That's an impressive well, thing. You've got a DVR, don't you? Yes, TV. Okay. There you go, baby. There you go. So nobody tell him what happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We got to play dumb. We'll figure it out. We want to hear you play. We're thrilled to hear you, and we want to hear all about you. But what are, you, what are we gonna? Let's start this thing off the right way. You've got. All right. Uh, let's come over here. All right. Okay. What do we? Oh, you got. Uh, there we go. We got malfunctions already. Yeah, that didn't take long. Get no. used to it. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Beware, I'm going to plug this in. There you go. Oh, Very Lord. nice. Yeah, um, you know, it, with instrumental music, it's always funny trying to uh, come up with titles. We have laughed about for, that a lot over uh, the years. Know, there's, some, there's some crazy titles, and uh, this one's no different. Um, I, I, I started working on the song, and the first thing that came to mind was Sugarfish. Sugarfish? So, <laughs> yeah. So how do because you, as in fish well, in the sea and then yeah, it's uh, well, it turns out it's my favorite sushi joint. Oh, but yeah. I saw the name. There is a reason. Sugar fish. I mean, that's just funny. So. All right, okay. let us let her rip. Paul Brown here. It's sugar fish.
Stick around, we'll be right back. Paul Brown. Ow. Breakfast with Gary and Kelly here on FM 88.5 KSPR with our, uh, with our very special guest this morning, Paul Brown. I am glad you were here. I, get, I have to tell you, you smell particularly refreshing today. Is it because of your birthday bash soap? <laughs> Yes, I use it exclusively. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Very nice. A new endorsement deal. We, we, I have to tell you, we do this, we, you know, for the bash. We always mess up the swag bag, the artist swag bags. And we, it's one of those things, every year after the bash, <coughs> we, we commit ourselves to coming up with good stuff, and then we forget about it until like three days before the bash. This year, they got soap. We were so very yeah. nice. Yeah. Laurie, I know. Well, it, it was fine soap. I'll good give soap. you that. It's but good soap. Oh, man. She loved it. Uh, she did. She, she did. did. She, she did. She Thank did. So I'm so glad you're here. Your story is really, really a good one. And, and I really, I want to start by hearing about your folks. I mean, oh, yeah. they were singers. Yeah, they're singers. They, they still are. I mean, um, happy Father's Day. But, yeah, um, absolutely. Um, yeah, they still, they, they still live in the house where I was born in Tarzana. Really? The tough part in Tarzana. And, uh, <laughs> right. they, uh, they're, they're both uh, singers, background singers, studio singers. And so I grew up in the studio with them. And I mean, they've sung with Sinatra and, and uh, pretty much everybody. Wow. Back in the day of the variety show, oh, you know, man. I mean, Sonny and Cher and Carol Burnett and did they do any all these shows. Yeah, they did all those shows. Really? And uh, even the original Dinah Shore show, a 15-minute oh, 15, 15 right? show. Yeah. Then him uh, and uh, Nat King Cole show, another 15-minute oh, show. They were on all those shows, and um, they're still singing. My mom's 88, and she's still singing with the King Sisters right now. Is One that of them was right? still, yeah. How did they meet? Did they meet singing? Yeah, they're they're both in the Meltones, the original, you know, Meltone man, oh, the Meltones, man. and um, so oh. yeah, they've been doing it, and it keeps them young, you know. Oh yeah. And they yeah. still do this thing every Saturday at their house where the singers come over and they do bagels and you know talk about old times, and they always end up in the den, you know, my dad's playing the piano and they're singing and it's really great. Oh, that's amazing. So you, you had no choice in this then? Well, I don't know. I mean, I have brothers and sisters that aren't in the music business, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's just the, one of those things. Brothers and sisters. I'm the uh, my third kid and um, I have an older brother, an older sister, and a younger sister. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we all kind of started with music and I was probably the worst musician in the bunch, so I was destined really? to stay in the music business. I was a drummer. And uh, my dad used to, you know, get on my case all the time about drumming. And uh, he's, he's a big harmony guy, you know. Yeah. So for him, the only thing that matters in music is harmony. And for me, being a drummer, the only thing that matters to me is the rhythm. You know, so when I write songs, it's usually very rhythm-based. And uh, My heart goes out to thing. parents that, uh, with little kids that play the drums. Yeah. I can't. Well, it could have been the trumpet. Yeah, that's yeah. true. My yeah. brother played the trumpet. But uh, I had my band rehearsals in my, in my bedroom when I was a kid. And my mom would come in and... And sing with us, and uh, oh, you know fun. it was pretty cool. How fun! Did you get to see any of those sessions? Like that? They oh yeah, a stuff? lot, a lot. And, oh um, man! And in fact, when I later in my life, I became an engineer, you know, yeah. producer, and I got to work on a session with Sinatra session with my parents really? and my sister, both singing oh, backgrounds. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so it's kind of cool. But uh, no, I grew up, you know, they they did Elvis Presley and. 
the ventures oh. and you know yeah. the monkeys. I mean, they sang the with everybody. There was only there was only there was only a hand. Seriously, there was only a handful of singers, you know. Yeah, Davey's a personal friend that I know. Nice! He was the I do see Mickey Dolan's at the driving range. Can you range. give me an autograph? Sure. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I've got a major story about Davey. Uh -huh. A major time. story? Oh. Crush? Oh, serious oh, crush? I was 13. It was horrible. I'll have to tell you later. Okay. <laughs> you know he's this big. Uh, huh? He's this tall. I don't care. <laughs> height doesn't matter when you're in love. No, height counts. Oh, man. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. That really is. That really is. So, do you, the, the, uh, so what did you switch to guitar then? I mean, it, I played guitar all along, and um, luckily my, my uncle was a pretty famous drummer, so I took drum lessons from the time I was like four until 15. And I also took guitar lessons from some of the great um, guys on The Tonight Show and oh, other, other right? amazing guitar players. And uh, so I played both. And when I was in bands, I was always writing music on guitar, because yeah. it's hard to write on drums, but, uh, you know. <laughs> It's been done, you know. The, the, yes, it really well, the one song that comes to mind is the, uh, the Miami Vice theme song. Right, that was a drum melody. Really? That's the only one I can think of. I was going to anyway. say Wipeout, but you know. Yeah, Wipeout, that was good, but that really wasn't <laughs> melodic. <laughs> True. <laughs> but every kid knew that song, That's right? right? Exactly. Even non-drummers. I'm telling you. I think my wife plays Wipeout pretty well. Is that right? Yeah. Well, let's get Jackie yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah, we could do that. Her, yeah. We'll figure that out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but... Um, the guitar was, was my main instrument for, for writing. And uh, when I started producing a lot of people and, and getting my songs placed on records, I mean, that's my, basically the way that I write. So yeah. I've been playing a long time. You, you spent a good long time before you started producing. It really is an engineer in the studio yeah. and stuff. How, you were pretty young when you started doing that, right? I was. And I, again, you know, my brother-in-law at the time was head engineer at Warner Brothers. Oh, you're kidding. And um, he was married to my sister. And, um, and he gave me my first job. In fact, right when I got married, and he called me up and he goes, how are you going to support your wife? Is it drumming as usual? He goes, no, come down to the studio. <laughs> come down to the studio tomorrow. So I came down and I started seconding. And this guy's a legendary engineer. He did all the Sinatra albums. Oh, no fool. And um, he's been my you know, main mentor in the music business. Yeah. And he even got me in the golf. So he kind of ruined my life. <laughs> on a I was lot, just going to say, levels. thanks a lot. But uh, he's a great guy, Lee Hirschberg. And um, oh, I, didn't I, still, I still play golf with him. Yeah. And uh, we, in fact, we played Pebble Beach for his 80th birthday. I took him up to Pebble and we played. That was a really memorable. Was that, that was the day after the bash, was it not? Uh, that was just... my son. Oh, yeah, that there was you my go. Son, for my son's 17th birthday, which was a couple weeks ago, I took him up to Pebble. So, so that's pretty much, by the way, my I get free golf. Is I April get free 29th. golf. My birthday you know, will be one of It's the one good thing about being a, an artist that, you know, Thankfully, the, the pro at Pebble Beach knows me and likes me, so oh, I get to play for free up there. So. It's a great place. It's been a long time. I've played it a long time ago. I'm yeah. afraid to even think what, they, what they're getting the up there. The first time now. I played there, I played with Harvey Mason and Bob James. Really? And uh, yeah, I, I, I tried to get them. Um, I was producing a Boney James album, and uh, I wanted to get foreplay on a Boney album. I mean, that was the concept. So they said, well, we're playing up in Monterey um, at the Jazz Festival. If, if you want to come up, and come to the concert, and then we'll play Pebble Beach in the morning, and then we'll fly back to LA and do the, do the, the session. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds <laughs> good. Twist my arm, twist Right, my arm. that will work. So nice. I did that, and uh, we did it, and we, we played golf in the morning, and we got on a plane. Harvey Mason still has golf shoes on. We got oh in, in, the, in the car from the airport, went to the session. He played the session in his, drum, in his you know, golf shoes. <laughs> and, uh, and then later I got Larry Carlton and uh, Nathan to play on it. So it was, That's wow. awesome. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. And that's what they say. More business is done on that's the right. golf course than that's it is true. in the office. Oh, man. That's, well, talk, talk about some of, the, some of the experiences that you had as an engineer and, and how, you know, I mean, that had to be helping you develop, you know, your Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, um, I mean, back then, the studio business was really flourishing. And um, a typical day, I, I tell people this and they can't believe it, but when I first started as an assistant engineer, I would go in and in the, in the daytime, I was, I was doing Van Halen's first record. And then at night, I was doing Michael McDonald's solo record. Oh, man. So it's the same producer engineer that would go from session to session. Yeah. So we had Van Halen in, in the morning, and no one knew who they were at the time. You know? And then uh, we'd have uh, Steve Gadd and Phil and Gaines, all these guys oh, yeah, at yeah. night. You know? So I got to see 
amazing array of musicians and great producers and sure. you know James Taylor and Randy Newman and for all those of us who don't know about engineering mm -hmm. can you kind of tell me what an engineer does well the engineers I mean, you know I'm just, responsible no, no, no. for the sound you know okay. the, the, the you know the recording process and you know are you, are you directing people are no that's pushing, really the producer's job you you know? buttons, the producer is more like a director in film where the producer is responsible for you know what actually happens during the so session, you're listening supposedly. To, you're listening to each person's yeah. musical instrument and singing, and you're putting all that together. That's why, yeah, that's what a producer does. The engineer actually just records it. Okay. You know, and then, and then there is a lot of design, like sonic design that goes on, and uh, a lot of the stuff that I do, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the actual sound itself, okay. as opposed to the way the elements come together and everything. But um, these okay. days, you have to do everything. You know? right. I mean, I produce, I engineer, That's, I write, I arrange. You have to do everything. That I'm was the artist. Be my next question. What do you think about today? Or do you do yeah, the I mean, same? It's, it's fun to, to, to do it all, but um, back in the day, it was like if you were an artist, you know, a guitar player, you just play the guitar. You know, you had a guy writing the songs, arranging the songs, recording the song, producing the song. Okay. But um, now, pretty much just because of financial and everything, yeah. you know, everybody has to do everything, including okay. mastering. You know, the only thing I don't do is. A record company. I've never done that, but hey. um, now is not a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, wow. you have you okay. have really gone and seen this whole thing flip upside down. That's true. Yeah, it's uh, it's a different it's a different business than when I got started. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, is is the computer thing, and I've and I've kind of had this conversation with a lot of people, but probably nobody that would know better than you. The the proliferation of of computers and home computers and everybody being able to sit down and they're now in their car and record an album. I mean, is, yeah. that, is that good or bad? Even well, on their phone. You know, it, it can be good for, for creative people, but I, in generally speaking, I think it's bad. Yeah. I mean, the, the quality of records has come down, you know, somewhat because of that, because people just take for granted, you know, I mean, guys record stuff in, you know, hotel rooms or in a hallway, yeah. or, and so there's no thought to the, the environment that they're in, and then the equipment that they're using. I mean, there's a lot to be, taken for granted when you're in a real studio with real microphones, sure. real preamplifiers, et cetera, all the Different stuff that acoustics. goes into making sound and just the acoustics alone, you know, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and recording it properly and everything else. Of course, there's a lot of things you can do with stuff that's recorded poorly, but still, you know, creatively, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I've seen it work a lot of different ways, but when you have a really good producer, a really good engineer, and a really good artist, really, you get a great product. Yeah. yeah. You would know. You would know. Paul, uh, Paul Brown is our guest. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, he's, he's, uh, we're going to get him to play a couple of tunes for us, all right? Paul yeah! Brown, yeah! Brown is Danny Kelly. Yeah! 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 Okay, we are uh, back with Paul Brown uh, here on Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. Yeah. Glad to have him. Kelly's good for us. You're not going to be caddying for us. Any, she's not, definitely not going to be caddying for us. I can drive the car. There, there, she could. She could do that. All right. Well, we're uh, we're glad you're here to do this. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, one of my favorite writers is uh, Van Morrison. Oh my! Yeah, singers. I just love this whole thing. And um, one of his songs, Moon Dance, <gasps> I've recorded on. Uh, Times. Remember it well. He did it song. at our bash the first yeah, time he did right. it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Very I good. Love this song. Paul Brown here on Breakfast with Gary Kelly. Yeah. It's a little jazz club going. It's a marvelous night for a moon dance With the stars up above in your eyes A fantabulous night to make romance Neath the color of October skies Where the leaves on the trees, they're color The sounds of the breezes that blow And I'm trying to please to the calling of your heart strings, they play soft and low. And all the sounds are more like. Dimly, oh, I forgot the words. And all the sounds are more like. It seems to shine in your blush. Can I hear 
one more moon dance with you, baby. My love, well, can I just make some more romance with you, 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 you? Well, I want to make love to you tonight. I can't wait until the moment has come. But I know the time will be just right. And straight into my arms you will run. When you come, my heart will be waiting to make sure that you're never alone. There and then all my dreams will come true, dear. There and then I'll make you my own. And every time, every time that I touch you, you just tremble inside you. I know how much you, you want me that. You can't hide, can I help? One more, more dance with you, baby. My love, well, can I just make one more moon dance with you, baby? Yeah. Gorgeous guitar. Yeah, this thing is ridiculous. It's a it's an old uh, L5 Johnny Smith style, and um, it's got a little Johnny Smith floating pickup, and uh, it's just a great old guitar. I rarely bring it out of the house, but uh, I figured for today, you know, like a small thing like this would be great. I'm honored. So, it yeah, sounds it. just great, especially even that little that little amp. It's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. All right, what are you gonna do? Another one for us? I can do that. Yeah, um, this new album that I have out called uh, Love You Found Me. And uh, this song I wrote for my wife, Jackie Brown. I was originally going to call it, um, I wish they all could be Canadian girls, but that didn't work out. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she's from Toronto. Anyway, this is uh, Love You Found Me. Actually, you know what? I'm just, I'll take it. Well, love, you found me. Put your loving arms around me, baby. But love, you thrill me through. I'm so glad you, you found me, love. Well, when it's cold outside, you want me with your heavenly smile. Girl, for your love, I would gladly walk a thousand miles. You see, love, you found me. She loving arms around me, baby. But love, you thrill me through. And I'm so glad you, you found me, love. You see, love, you, you feel me. Whisper in my ear and comfort me. But love, you thrill me through. And I'm so glad you, you found me, love. Well, and I'm all alone and lonely. The middle of the night, babe. And I reach out for you. And you come to me. You hold me tight. It says, Love, you found me. Put your loving arms around me. But love, you thrill me through. And I'm so glad you, you found me, love. You see, love. Whisper in my ear and come. 
Well, love, you thrill me through. And I'm so glad you, you found me, love. Well, everybody just needs a little love. It might be hard to see. But now that I found you, love, tell me what you gonna do, gonna do with me. Well, love, you found me. Put your loving arms around me. Well, love, you thrill me through. I'm so glad you, you found me, love. You see, love. Heal me, whisper in my ear and comfort me. Well, love, you found me. I'm so glad you, so glad you found me, love. Get you out of the doghouse. <laughs> Paul Brown is our guest. We'll be back. Stick around. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Paul Brown is our guest. Glad, uh, glad he's here. Glad you're all here. Good, uh, good, good stuff. Really good stuff. Before the break, though, we were talking about his um, life. Remember yes, that? we were. You remember that? I remember. remember that? I do remember that. I've no, got were, that seat off. <laughs> Get them close. You were talking about going from engineering to music. Where was it in your career where you actually? I mean, I know you picked up a guitar when you were a kid. Yeah. But where was it when you were actually an engineer and you said to yourself, "I want to play music." <laughs> well, I, I mean, I had been playing a lot, and um, I was actually on the road with uh, this guy, Long John Baldry. He's an uh, English rocker, mm -hmm. loser, and playing drums at the time. And, uh, in his band? In his band, okay. yeah. And at the end of that tour, um, my whole band from, from high school basically went on the road with him. And uh, at the end of that tour, they all stayed up there, and the producer came over from England to record the record, and he brought a drummer with him. It didn't have anything to do with me, he just, this is right. the guy he works with or whatever. So at that point I said, you know what, I want to be the producer, because I want to make that decision, and I'm done <laughs> with drums. Okay. And so uh, I came back to LA, and that's basically when I got married and um, and started engineering, and uh, and then after producing for probably 20 years, um, I was in the studio one day and I was writing day da day da day da da day da, which became 24/7. And um, I finished the song, and it was the first time I ever listened to something that I recorded and went, "Wow, that sounds like a finished product," you know. So I said, "Wow, this is." I hadn't ever had that experience, so I, I brought some people in to listen to it, and I just played it for them. And they're like, "Wow, it's great! Who is it?" And I said, "Well, it's me." <laughs> and I said, well, really? They said, "You mean you're, you're the artist, right?" I said, "Yeah." So they said, "Well, <laughs> you should do a couple more." So I did. I did a couple more. I did Moon Dance. And I did this other song, Fat City, and um, and they listened to it, and they're like, "Man, it's great! You should do a whole record." So I so I did. I think I'm a kind of a late bloomer on the uh, artist thing. I I got signed at 48. And I think that might be in the, in the Guinness Book, I don't know. But it's pretty, I mean, Al Jarreau was kind of a late bloomer. I think he got signed around 40. So it's pretty wow. cool, yeah. So, so it's never too that, late. No, that, yeah, there you go. And I see people at concerts all the time, you know, guys come up to me, they're like, man, you know, I'm a guitar player, and I'm, you know, I'm, but they're, you know, they're my age or even older, and they're like, well, I'm just like, hey, man, 
keep playing and you know I got signed at 48 you can get signed why not yeah you know, so. isn't that crazy see I would have guessed it, it, but it sounds like it didn't happen that when you were working producing and, and engineering mm. other sessions that you would have been sitting there going damn I should no, be playing not on really. this thing I really I wasn't like that I really yeah. enjoy producing and engineering and, yeah. and I still do it and I you know I kind of split my time up but yeah. I mean like I started playing and and I love to play and, and it's fun just to get the reaction from the people oh, and yeah. just play and um, getting a lot more comfortable with, you know, be, I mean, you know, going from being a drummer and then behind the scenes. Sure. So absolutely. I was never like the front man, even back in the day when I was playing. So it's a different, it's a different thing. Yeah, right? that, and that was exactly what I was going to ask you next. I mean, there, there has been an adjustment period for you, too, hasn't there? Just kind of getting going comfortable. Through it. There you go. <laughs> I, well, I think you've done Like I just forgot the words of that song. That never oh, happened to anybody. Yeah. You know. well, Robert know Goulet, you. you know, just right. comes to mind. There you go. He blew well, people, that, you know, the uh, national yeah. anthem. People know your name now. That's true. You know? Not the, the the famous football coach. No. Or the, uh, the, the there's a there's a guy in Hawaii, Paul Brown Shampoo, and oh, uh, really? yeah, he's, he's huge over there. And uh, it's right on the bottle, Paul Brown, big letters. It's hysterical. Oh. So yeah, somebody sent me a bottle of it, and uh, my wife and I were over there, and we're in this um, restaurant, and the, the Paul Brown Shampoo guy was at the hotel. No. So we're we're having dinner, and one of the servers comes up and he goes, "Man, I just want to tell you how much I love your product." <laughs> I hadn't heard, you know, product. And thankfully, you were having okay, a really cool. good hair day. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's pretty funny, but um, it's it's a it's a famous name, and it's kind of a like it doesn't really have a vibe to it to me. Paul Brown sounds. Well, you're in Wikipedia. Because I, I like changing people's <laughs> names when they're when they become okay. artists. You know, I mean, Boney James. You know, okay. I mean, he went from Jim Oppenheim, oh. and that wasn't going to happen. So I produced <laughs> his first record, and then Steve Grove, you know, huge groove. And Jessie J, she was, you know, Jessica Spinella. That wasn't going to happen either. Yeah. So, so I'm, I, I have a habit of changing people's so names. So, are you going to change your name? Well, name? I don't know. You know, I'm thinking about it now. Not even PB. At this point. Yeah, we get that a lot from people that are burning out this show. <laughs> oh no! They go into the Why just witness Brown, protection that's program. It. No, I don't know. <laughs> you know. What can Brown do for you? No, that's been taken. <laughs> Can, can, P, B, and J. Yeah, there you go. Did that there a couple times. No, yeah, I, I think it's good. Yeah. Can you uh, can you talk about the circumstances that led to the? Uh, you know, I guess the one that really put you on the producer map mm -hmm. would have been the the bony. Yeah, thing. well, it's funny because I, I you know become known as the smooth jazz whatever producer, and yeah. um, I mean I was working with Luther Vandross and uh, this group Shy, yeah. and basically doing R and B music and, and and engineering and producing that kind of music. And then, you know, I think it was uh, 88, uh, David Benoit um, was producing the saxophonist Sam Rainey and um, asked me to mix the record for him. So we were um, at the studio mixing the record and I met Sam. And that was really the first time I'd ever done anything like a smooth, you know, yeah, jazzy yeah. kind of a thing. And uh, Sam and I kind of hit it off and I ended up producing a couple of records for him. And then um, I was actually on the road with Bobby Caldwell I had mixed his record and we were on the road and I was recording and doing his sound. Mm -hmm. And Boney was second keyboardist and he played a little bit of sax, but he was just floored me from the rehearsals, you know. And so when we got back to LA, we said, you know what, let's go in the studio and, and put a record together. And so we did. And really that super I was really into the R and B thing. And Boney's a big R and B fan. Sure. Oh yeah. And he was with the Isaac Brothers. I mean yeah, he's yeah. done a lot of that sort of stuff. So the records that we made were really like instrumental R and B music. And that's what, kind of what we thought they were. Yeah. Like it was like a Luther record, but with saxophone. And so that kind of started that whole R&B kind of approach to smooth jazz. Yeah. And um, so I did nine records with Boney. Yeah. You know, got him signed to Warner Brothers. And then there was just a host of other people at the time, like uh, Kirk Whalum and uh, Peter White and uh, Rick Braun. And uh, they were all kind of in this R&B approach. Mm -hmm. And um, that lasted for a long time. And then everybody started doing it. And it kind of became a parody of itself almost, yeah, you know. So, so now I'm trying a lot of other things, but that's kind of the, the genesis of, of the smooth jazz as far as the stuff that I've been involved. With. Sure, sure. Well, I, I, you know, I mean, your your involvement with it, I think, it coincides, you know, with the, the whole history, really. I, you know, I mean, for, I know I got, for better I, or some, worse. Yeah, I, somehow yeah. I got you know, this label of this, but, uh, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm a deadhead, you know, and I, yeah. listen, I listen to, I, I listen to uh, you know, some, some strange music, and um, I never really listened to even, you know, even jazz all that much until I started really getting involved with it. And then I went back and started really listening to Wes Montgomery yeah. 
and Miles Davis and, you know, and all that. And I was lucky um, along the way, you know, uh, Tommy the Puma, who's one of my favorite producers, yeah. came to me and he said, at, at, the, at that time I had a production contract with Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was pretty much bringing all the artists that I was, you know, getting involved with. But he said, I really want you to produce some records for me and I want you to start with George Benson. Oh. And for Universal, so yeah. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I can't do that. Yeah, he can play a little. So uh, I got to do, I've been really lucky with working with some of my, you know, heroes. And uh, I did a couple of records with George and, and Al Jarreau. Yeah. Oh, and, um, and Larry Carlton, I get that picture in the background. That's a that was the debut of the blue shirt, by the way. Oh, ah. oh there you go. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, but look at that picture, it's so funny oh, because it, it looks posed. But we were jamming at the Canadian Awards, and we were just at this moment in this song. I mean, it's so symmetric. The hands, the hand position, yeah. the jaw, everything yeah. about it. It's like we're, it's like stand like this, but it wasn't like that. I, what I was thinking is how many guitar players out there are going to Photoshop their own faces over yours on that thing? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, with... I mean, you know, one of the reasons I went up there to do this show was to get a picture with Larry playing, you know, because oh, I mean, I produced, I also produced a couple of records for Larry, yeah. and he's been one of my real influences on the guitar, you know. Yeah. I mean, Eric Gale and um, Larry and then Wes Montgomery and George Benson, those are my main influences on guitar, aside from Jerry Garcia, is probably my <laughs> first influence. Really, yeah. really. Talk about how you felt. So, so one of your first production things is to go in with George Benson. I mean, what, what do you say to him? No, try it again. Yeah, I right. mean, really. Put a well, little bit more emphasis to it. Know. Well, you know, it's funny because he's more old school. And so he's really like, okay, what do you want me to do? I'm a guitar player. He's not one of these guys who's like, you know, we should do this and do that. He's not like that at all. So it's funny that uh, that guy like that, you'd think, would, like you say, yeah. that, you know, would have all this. But he's no, he's just, you know, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. And then we'll try to make a great record, you yeah. know. And uh, he doesn't really cross that line of trying to be a producer or an arranger or anything. He he wants people to bring what they do yeah. to it, you know. But we'd be sitting around, the, you know, in the studio, and he'd be playing. And he's just, you know, he's a freak of nature. Yeah. Oh. And uh, <laughs> and he'll play one of these licks that sounds like he's going up and he's going down simultaneously, right? And I go, George, how do you do that? I mean, he knows I like, play, you know. Yeah. He goes, man, you just keep doing that soulful thing you do. <laughs> He, he, won't, he won't tell me, he really? won't show me, wow. so I finally figured it out, but I mean, people always say, oh, I wish I could play like George Benson, you know, but the thing is, even if you had the technical ability to play like George Benson, right. you still couldn't play like George Benson yeah. because of what his mind, the way, the, what he's pulling from, you know, from, um, you know, Duke Ellington, and I mean, all these things, every phrase he plays, you can hear all that, yeah. and so people just don't understand um, where that's coming from, but he doesn't read music, it's all oh, just really? to hear, oh. same thing with Wes Montgomery. You know, and I'm, I, again, I was, play, I was playing one of his guitars, and I had just listened to um, Grant Green, who's one of my favorites, you know, and I, I learned this lick right off the record. I got a pretty good ear, and I read music, but I, I was just, you know, this is like, yeah, do, yeah, do, yeah, do, yeah, do, And he goes, man, that's a half step, not a full step in the middle of that riff. I said, really? So he played it, he goes, it's like this. And I said, really? I went back and listened to the record, he was right. Oh, man. And then he took the guitar and he said, then Grant said this. I and mean, he played the entire solo. Oh my God. Just from here, you know, so he's, wow. he's, he's on another planet. <laughs> can, can you describe the, the, the different kind of shades of, of uh, producing when you go into the studio with somebody? I mean, there, you know, there, because there are so many different demands on you as a producer when you get mm -hmm. with somebody based on who they bring and what they're bringing to the table. And their it's, di it's different with every artist. It's also different with every song yeah. of that record, you know. And uh, some songs, people send a song and they'll say, "Well, I want to do this song," and so the song basically already has sort of an evolution. Mm -hmm. And so you take that song and you know put your spin on it, how you think that artist should sound on it. And other times, it's like I'll have a idea of a song and and, and play it for somebody, and they say, "Well, I like that. Let's design it for my particular project." But Usually songs have their own evolution, you know, and it's fairly natural. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that when you, when you try to take something and, and, and go a different direction, usually it doesn't come out that good. Yeah. And um, so if you're really struggling with something, usually it's not right. So I'll go back and start over or, or just take a different path. But um, every song, you know, is its own little entity. Little stories. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of stories, you've been married how long? In September, 32 years. Really? Good for you. Good for you.
I wanted to ask you, in a, a, a quote that you said, something about... You need um, advice? No. 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 <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But in one of your quotes, you said something about uh, a musical conversation with your wife. Right. What did that mean? Well, the, well, the lack of musical conversation, because in, in the 30 years we've been married, we really don't talk about music very much. Okay. It's like, you know, there are other things, and, you know, we have kids, we have, you know, home, dogs, etc. I mean, just life in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of like, I have my studio at home, and I kind of like do my thing. And then when I'm not in my studio, I'm not really doing that anymore. So, so it's been a great way to, to sort of get away from it and refresh my mind and, you know. So she had something to do with this last... Yeah, yeah, well, she decided that um, she's a big country fan, yeah. you know, and um, <laughs> so it's amazing that we stayed together for 30 years, despite <laughs> the fact that she's a country fan, but she, she wanted to help me produce my vocals on this, on I Love You Found Me in particular, okay. and, um, you know, I came to her and I said, well, I got this idea for this song, Love You Found Me, and I showed her the lyrics, she says, well, you know, you should say, well, now that you found me, what you gonna do with me? <laughs> you know, which became part of the bridge, and um, and she she was really helpful in the studio. You know, she picked the shirt. She, uh, you know, she. Uh, <laughs> How did you guys meet? Like, you know, more, more, more. Okay, okay. You know. How did you guys Jeez. meet? Uh, we actually met down here in Orange County. She she's Canadian, and she um, at age 22 decided she'd had it with Canada, and she literally is one of these unbelievable stories with a hundred dollars. And a one-way ticket left really? left Toronto and flew to and she lived in um, Newport, okay. and she just coincidentally happened to be friends with my sister's friends, okay. and my sister had a party. Boom, that's where we met. Aww, How funny! Sweet. How funny! Amazing! Sweet. I love that story. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Paul Brown is our guest. We're uh, gonna take a break and come back and uh, squeeze another tune out of you if All we right. can, and, and we'll squeeze if we have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just yeah. Yeah. We are uh, back here on Breakfast yeah. with Gary and Kelly. Yeah. Having, a, having a great morning with, uh, with Paul Brown that is, uh, wow. that is screaming by, that it's uh, really going fast. And uh, we're really glad you're here. But what do you, uh, we what need you another going? song. We need another song, man. Well, I think I should do the note. 24-7. Is this absolutely. the one that started yeah. it off, huh? This is the one that started it yeah, off. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Paul Brown here on uh, Breakfast with Gary and Kelly.
Thank you guys so much. Get out of here. Thank you. This has been great. Thank you. I so appreciate Thank it. How about that, wonderful. huh? We got to do this again. We have run out of time. Join us in a couple of weeks. We'll have Warren Hill on. Thanks you all for coming. Appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. This is Karen Kelly. My goodness.